Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Glory to God. Give the Lord a praise. Oh, Lord, we're glad you were born. <laughs> Kelly, I'm glad you were born. Me too. Happy thank birthday. You. I have, have to say thank you for that. Yeah, happy Christmas. Happy birthday. Thank you. Isn't she beautiful? And praise God. And Gloria sends her love, but she's watching today. So Merry Christmas, Gloria and Bebe. <laughs> we just praise God for the both of you. And so we're going to be teaching all this week from Rick Renner's brand new book, Christmas, The Rest of of the story. Ah, glory to, you're not kidding, it's the rest of the story. And it's absolutely gorgeous, the, the illustrations and the beautiful part of this, the, the illustrator, good friend of Rick's, is a Jew. And he brought, oh, he brought his part of this and his knowledge and just right off the bat, I want to show you just in the very beginning here, the, uh, come on, Kenna. This is Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Glory to God. And, and of course, they have a, they have a, they have a picture of it there in the studio and they'll, They'll run it for, for real where you don't have to look at it in this book. Those of you that are watching on television. Oh my, this is a treasure. And so we're going to be offering you this book. <clears throat> Let's open our Bibles first to the Gospel of John. <clears throat> well, is the Christmas story in the Gospel of John? No. And yes, <laughs> and no. But anyway, uh, the Lord began to deal with me, oh, just a couple of months ago, that I'm, I'm to be here and just park here until he releases me from it. So in the eighth chapter of the book of John, verse 28, then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am, he is in an italics there. So we know, don't we? I am, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Now that pleased the people that were listening to watch. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus unto those Jews which believed on him, if, now here's the key, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. No, you'll know it, and it'll make you free. That word know in the Greek is gnosko. It's translated in the Christmas story that Joseph knew her not. Now that's, that's the Christmas story. And now you know the truth, praise God. You know the truth, not a truth, the truth. Well, what does that mean? Well, tell me the truth about your finances. Well, I've got all this debt. No, 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 no. You told me the facts. The truth is our God, will meet all of our needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's the truth. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoo, glory to God. Now shall we go over to the book of Matthew. And <clears throat> we will read, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And, and we'll find out from Brother Rick here in a moment why. 
And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written in the prophets, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. That's very important. Now, let's stop here for a moment. We see <coughs> the nativity scene. It's a composite, and it's a very sweet thing. But the wise men weren't there. But we, we, we have to include them, right? <laughs> but they just weren't there. They were not in Bethlehem at that time. So, and why do we believe there are three? We three kings of Orion are, there was more than three. There were three gifts. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, so we let's need to realize how much our humanity, our brain, we just fill in the, we fill in the extra space. We fill in details without realizing that we're doing that. And that's right. That's really important that we begin to lay those on the table and let the Lord show us what those are because it happens here, but it happens in our spiritual life too. It does. And uh, you assume things on the surface, mm -hmm. but here we're going widescreen and see this this entire event, and it is extremely important that we know what happened mm -hmm. because it answers all kinds of questions about the poor carpenter, mm -hmm. the research shows <laughs> that Mary's uh, father and mother were very wealthy people. Do, do you imagine that, that the God Almighty is going to have His Son born in a poor family? There are a lot of people who think that. They, there was no place for them at the inn. Well, why? Thank Let me tell you something, sweetheart. It was 90 miles <laughs> from Nazareth to Bethlehem. 90 miles and you're about to have a baby? It was slow going. Yeah. On a mule. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not a mule, a mule, a donkey, but a donkey for all. <laughs> this is very slow. Now, you that have had children, can you imagine yourself riding a donkey and, and the baby's about to be born? And what are you going to do along the way when? Well, I always wondered. There was no roadside park no. to pull the donkey in. No, they carried provisions for that. Everybody did. And where they were going, no poor people had to go pay taxes, no. did they? No. <laughs> <laughs> the Everybody shepherds were there, but they weren't in the enro enrollment. Yeah. Anyway, all these things are important. Well, why? Well, when you're, when, when you're raising small children and you bring them up to know these things about it, and then you can tell that story and, and you can tell uh, what, what, what do you think Mary did when, when she had to go to the restroom? Oh, no right along beside the highway. <laughs> hey, God provided all these things. These were all well, and these, these were, listen, that was everybody traveling. <laughs> but all of these things needed to be added into the story so it becomes more real. It's real and it's precious, but it was hard. And she's having to go very slowly for 90 miles on a donkey. Well, what did they do at night? Well, all of, they carried all of these facilities with them, and they had, they had their tent and, and everything to go along. Everybody had the same problems. 
Hmm. But it needs to come to our thinking and come to our mind because we know that the angels of God are watching over her. I mean, they are protected from the word go. Right. A and we'll see that also as we go into this. You know, Dad, I think right here as we begin these broadcasts, I think you brought up a really important thing is like how real this quote unquote, we've called it a story all these years, but we probably should stop doing that. This, how real this account mm -hmm. is. And what I've found, especially in these days we're headed into and in where we are right now, the more real Jesus is to you, the more real reality Jesus, your shepherd, your savior, the one who has done all this and the one who God the Father sent to walk this account out that we're gonna hear about these next couple of weeks, the more real he is, the more connected you be can become to him and he will begin to show you the reality of who you are. So when you hear things, let's just set our hearts right now as dad brings this word and we appreciate what brother Rick has done. Um, let's set our hearts to not just hear the account of Christmas uh, corrected and set right and learn new things and go, oh, I didn't know that. I thought this. Let's just really be open to him to use this also to dig a little deeper into ourselves and just show us things that aren't that we had wrong or it's amazing how this can lead to you seeing something about yourself based on something in error you thought about the the Christmas account. So I just want us to kind of set our hearts to really hear deep, mm -hmm. deep. Mm -hmm. Not just, oh, that's great. Amen. I want that on my coffee table. This is more, <laughs> this is more uh, the account of an adventure yeah. than so just important. a story. Mm -hmm. It is a magnificent story. And the historical part of it is important. It is. But it's an adventure yeah. of a family facing all kinds of of difficulties. And what do I do next? And how mm. how all of this occurred? Amen. Amen. So, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. Let's go over here. Well, I'll just say it and, and then we'll, we'll read it out of Rick's book. The Magi, there were three gifts, enormous gifts. And um, they, they were very highly respected people. Very powerful people. The reason this troubled Herod immensely that e that they would even come where he was is because these these people were so powerful. There had been times that they actually dis just put down and out of office Roman emperors. Mm. Well, he is sweating it. He's wondering, uh, have they come to put me down off my throne? What, what is a king? He was really upset. And that's why. Because this whole caravan came there. And could, there was most likely at least 500 people in that caravan. There were, there were, they had their own army and soldiers with them to protect them. They had to come through some really dangerous territory to get there. And they had all this wealth. They were extremely wealthy people to start with. And they brought all of this wealth with them to present to the new king. Glory to God. Mm. That brings a, a different thing to our, our thinking and our imagination. And Rick goes into that and we'll see it before the week's up. Glory to God. Now then, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child, not the baby. And when you have found him, bring the, me word again that I may come and worship him also. 
And when they'd heard the heard the, the, the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. This would have been in Nazareth, not Bethlehem. Now, 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, then only eight miles from Bethlehem to Jerusalem, where the baby was presented, circumcised. And then the prayers came. Anna and Simeon, they knew. The prayers knew who he was. Isn't that interesting? Praise God. <laughs> so, and uh, they, uh, they, and when they were come into the house, not the manger, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented or offered unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother in, into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And there was there and stayed there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. The first martyrs, mm -hmm. little babies, but it had been prophesied. But they were the first martyrs. Amen. It's precious. It's tough, but it's a precious thing in this adventure and in this story. So now, but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So God saw to it that they were well financed mm -hmm. because we don't know how long they were in Egypt. They were wild. <laughs> Are well financed. Now let's go to the book of Luke. It's important for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us. Now, um, Brother Rick opened this into my eyes. I'd, I'd, I'd connected it in, in a lot of other places, but Luke's writings, it's a documentary to Theopolis. Now, he said the same thing in the book of Acts, to continue. So the book of Acts is, is record. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning are eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. There were in the days of Herod the king a certain priest named Zechariah. So he begins with John the Baptist and gives this entire account of Zechariah. And so we go down through that. Now, now look at this. Gabriel was involved, the archangel of, of the messenger of God. Gabriel appeared to him. And he said, I'm old, and he griped about it. Well, he shut his mouth. 
This is one time he could not, God could not afford a bunch of unbelief coming out of this man's mouth. And if you'll check it out, he lost his hearing over that period of time also. Hmm. Now, how that happened, I don't know, but it happened anyway. Now then, let's come over Verse 26, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, or Savior, or Yahshua. Now, it, in, in Hebrew, it's translated in the fifth book of the Bible as Joshua. And in one place, one place only, in the book of Hebrews, it's translated as Jesus. And you, you kind of have to go around that and realize that it wasn't talking about Jesus, it was talking about Joshua. But it's the same name. Both of them are saviors. Joshua took over where Moses left off. And he's the one that took the children of Israel into victory. Amen? Amen. So that's wonderful in itself, isn't it? Yes. So let's continue to read. And shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now I want to comment on that a moment. That was an amazing miracle. But when you think about it, the moment you receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, the same Spirit of God mm -hmm hovered over you and you were, you became, I became, you became a new creation, a new sinless creature. Amen. Amen. And all th fifth chapter, fifth chapter, second Corinthians. And all things became new and all things were God. Old things passed away. What? That old sin nature. Old things passed away and all things became new. And you and I were, now we shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We were made mm -hmm. the righteousness of God in him. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And that's when that same Holy Spirit did the very same thing, hovered over us, and a holy thing came because our spirit being, which is the real us, amen. amen. We are a spirit. We have a soul made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions, and we live in this physical body until the day we depart. Amen. Amen. So that in itself is marvelous revelation. And if you haven't made him Lord of your life yet, do it right now in the name. Don't, don't wait till tomorrow. You don't have any guarantee about tomorrow. And all, this is very simple. All I did, I just said, Jesus, come into my heart. And he did. Now, it's too simple. No, 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 no. There's nothing simple about that. That's just the final step, Kelly. And we're out of time. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> no, 
Jesus went to hell for us. He paid the price. All we had to do was receive We it. just get to do the simple part. Yeah, that's right. Amen. <laughs> he did the hard. We'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> I wonder what Jesus' birth was really like. Why did God choose Mary and Joseph to be his parents? Were they really poor, like I was always taught? Dive deep into the account of the nativity with Rick Renner's book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, and find out there is more to Jesus' birth than you ever knew. Using his knowledge of the Greek language, along with historical and archeological records, Rick Renner will take you on an exciting journey through the Christmas scriptures. Find out details like who the Magi really were and why the angels were so astonished at the word made flesh. This beautifully illustrated and well-researched book will bring the Christmas story to life for you and your family. The discussion questions at the end of each chapter will help your family create a Christmas tradition of learning together. Ultimately, Christmas, the rest of the story, will point you to the purpose of the Nativity, the death and resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This Christmas season, let the story of Jesus' birth open your eyes to God's amazing plan. Order Rick Renner's new book, Christmas, the rest of the story, for $29.99 on our website, kcm.org slash TV special, or when you call 800-600-7395. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. It's absolutely wonderful to have had you on this broadcast today. And I wanna, it, this, this story, this adventure, is so important to everybody on the face of this earth. So let people know, get in on this, hallelujah, and, and study this with us. And we'll see you tomorrow. And until then, this is Kenneth Copeland and my daughter, Kelly, <laughs> that we'll, ah, glory to God. And we'll be back tomorrow. Hey, don't miss this. Oh, you know where it says DVR, record, do it. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. Until this and Kenneth Copeland and Kelly Copeland reminding you that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and Jesus is Lord. <laughs> well, I finally got it. God loves you, we love you, and, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Praise God. The 2023 Kenneth Copeland Ministries calendar is here. This is our New Year's gift to you, available on kcm.org or when you call 800-600-7395. Get your 2023 KCM calendar today while supplies last.